This is the second video of the magnesium power cell adaptation by Mike at Faraday Energy Research. What's inside this cell, since we didn't get a chance to see it last time, is a carbon rod like this with a small piece of wire that's shoved down to a hole that's drilled into the end. So this is a piece of 12 gauge solid copper. It doesn't really matter what the gauge is. And it's wound with magnesium strip. This is what that stuff looks like. You can see by the surface already, it's a kind of rough surface, pretty porous, so high, you know, higher amount of surface area than say if this is a polished strip. And uh, when you receive it, it'll be coated in some kind of oil. So make sure to clean that off. Uh, I used isopropyl alcohol. So what I'm gonna do now is connect the voltmeter to the power cell. And we'll just leave the voltmeter connected the entire time. And then I'm also going to connect in parallel with it this little jewel thief circuit. And so there's probably some small voltage left in the capacitor of the jewel thief from testing. Uh, what I'm going to do now is wet this cell, which has a paper towel divider. It's just, you know, regular household paper towel. One layer. I'm going to wet it with distilled water now. So I want to say that this rod was uh, wetted once, only uh, barely, not anywhere near as wet as I just made it now. And uh, it was allowed to dry for several days. So this is a totally dry cell starting out. I've done nothing to the carbon. It's untreated. The only thing that, uh, that I did when I first got it was to wipe it off just because it had some carbon dust on it and I didn't want that to soak in and start to short out the layers. So my meter lead popped off. I'll put that back on. And we are losing quite a bit of voltage. So what I'm gonna do is disconnect the jewel thief. We can see that the voltage quickly builds up. So it doesn't seem to have with plain distilled water enough power to keep the jewel thief active. I'm not sure what the result will be if um, that carbon rod gets fully saturated. I could try immersing this and seeing if it makes any difference, but with distilled water, my guess would be it's not gonna make too much difference because, well, distilled water is a pretty terrible electrolyte when it comes right down to it. So even if I put a bunch more water on here, even let it pool up underneath, I don't think we're going to end up getting much more out of that. So I'm going to let it build up here. We'll see what kind of voltage we get to. At this point, I would have put in about two cc's of water. We're probably looking at about a half cc pulled up on the bottom. So it was filled up to two and a half when I started. It's now empty. And we're up to 1.34, which is about, you know, a, a fully charged NICAD or a dead lithium, or a, excuse me, a dead alkaline battery or a carbon pile battery. But that voltage is quick to disappear, and we can see that we really don't have the current. If we just connect that continuously, it won't keep it on, and then its attempt to start up is keeping that voltage low. Just turning down the uh, trigger power to see if maybe we can get this circuit operating just a tad bit more efficiently at this lower voltage. That's why it's tunable. All right, so turning it down, 
we do get some usable output from the Jewel Thief. And again, this is just plain distilled water, cleaned paper towel, and a totally bare carbon rod, magnesium strip. There is so little to it, it's quite shocking that it works at all. But with a bit of salt, of course, or a proper electrolyte, you could drastically enhance the output of this cell. And uh, so that's what we'll be testing ultimately is the, uh, the lifespan of the cell with a proper load compared to, say, an alkaline while keeping it wet, and then we'll be encapsulating this into a bag and capturing any outgassing that occurs so that we don't have to keep re-wetting it in order to fully use up whatever reaction is happening between the magnesium and likely the water. So uh, that should pretty much conclude our second test of the magnesium power cell. A shout out to you over there at uh, Faraday Energy Research, Mike. This is a pretty fantastic little design and adaptation. I've never seen the original video, but uh, if I can find it, I'll throw both a link to yours and that original video down in the description below. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a little something. This is an interesting experiment, and I think these might be a really good solution as an emergency power battery that just needs a bit of water, say from the tap, to activate it when you need it. And since it has a voltage about the same as an alkaline, for low power applications, a few of these things could easily run a flashlight and just keep it going for, say, a day or two, and uh, they can sit there dry probably almost indefinitely on your shelf waiting, and they cost almost nothing to make. So there it is. And I will get back to you when I have a full piece of uh, test data with this compared to a normal battery.